Now, I just want to take a step back on the local, um, exi already existing traditional water management structure. Why actually um, was this changed, if you say that it was actually working quite well during all these times? Um, well, um, I wouldn't say that it wasn't. It was working quite well because the social dynamic at the community level has changed and, and the system has deteriorated during the periods of conflict. Um, it's a system where actually the community themselves come together, they elect one person, so-called Mirab, who will be in charge of allocating waters to different plot. I mean, it's a structure basically at the plot level. And um, it's a system where basically a father is a Mirab, then the son becomes a Mirab, and the knowledge is passed on you know, throughout these different generations. And in the past, um, in the 70s before the war, um, the government was more involved um, helping, giving a hand to this community-based system with um, planning in terms of water infrastructure, um, like for instance, whether there were dams, but not big dams, smaller dams, enforcement of those water rights that were uh, decided upon based from the communities themselves. But now the situation has changed. I mean, the system is still there, but there have been some manipulation by the power holders in the community in some situation, not always. Um, so there's definitely um, room for improving the system because one thing is that um, there's the political dimension of it. I mean, the impact of war in terms of the social structure that has changed at the community level. The other aspect of it is the destruction that was caused by these um, wars um, to the basic, um, to the infrastructures, the canals, I mean. Um, so you basically need both the infrastructure as well as the management in place in order to enhance the performance of the structure. So in that regard, regards, I mean, the, the system needs to be improved. Um, 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 so with that thinking, when the government came in place, um, then you know there were different thinking about how to improve the system, and this idea of IWRM came along, which um, and I believe IWRM was initially um, um, the, um, promoted or actually developed in Europe, in uh, France, I believe. You said that especially the poor communities were facing the most severe impacts of water scarcity and other issues related to water management. How, do we have any um, mechanisms for addressing their complaints or for raising their interests in this regard? I mean, um, what I was talking about in terms of the impact, it was more about the vulnerabilities. Um, uh, but when it comes to water sharing, especially water sharing of um, agriculture and uh, irrigation, it's not always the poor that actually suffers because in Afghanistan, the, the location matters. If you're an upstream location closer to access the resources, you'll get you know better resources. So you could be a farmer, a, a poor farmer, but um, in a better location with more access to your land. So your productivity will increase, but someone could be a rich farmer, meaning that they will own a large amount of land and have other assets. But if they're in the downstream communities, then you know with less water, their productivity will be less. Um, so that division of poor and rich is not so much in the irrigation sector, but it's more about the vulnerability and the coping mechanisms for the family with the vulnerabilities of uh, water the, during the periods of droughts and, and floods. Coming to your question regarding the you know mechanisms um, uh, in Afghanistan, um, we do have you know these shoras, jirgas at the community level, and also the mayor of themselves are one of the players that do respond to the conflict as well. Um, um, in most of the cases, if the conflict is at the plot level, they usually solve it among each other with the involvement of the elders, with the involvement of the uh, Mehrab, because the system is in place where the individuals know their rights. They know that, okay, for a certain period of time, they should be re receiving water for two hours a day. I mean, for example, during the summertime, if, if that's a period that they should be receiving a lot of, a lot of water. Because they have that local knowledge. Um, and um, But in some situation or in situation where the conflict actually involves with um, two provinces, 
then that's where the conflict, um, the communities come together and, and they take it to the state um, actors at the district level. And in some situation, they've actually brought their concern um, to Kabul dealing with the Ministry of Energy and Water and also with other state authorities. In terms of structure, we do have um, the water user associations are at the village level. Then we have the water councils, the river basin councils, um, again at the um, sub, um, 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 at the provincial level. But at the national level, we have a structure called Supreme Council of Water, and they're supposed to look at in terms of planning and conflict management over water resources. And how does the legal framework look like? The legal framework, um, as I mentioned early, the water law, which was passed uh, by the parliament in 2010. So the water law deals with water rights um, issues in terms of, uh, as well as the roles and responsibilities of different um, government agencies involved in the water sector. What do you think could the international community actually do to address these issues? We do have um, a law in place. Um, there have been regulations um, established to further support the implementation of IWRM concept in Afghanistan. Um, one of the challenge uh, that we've actually came, um, we identified in our report was um, in terms of funding um, of the water sector. Um, and what we, um, in our report, when we examined the funding, um, both committed and uh, um, uh, to the water sector between period of um, 2000 and, um, 2001 to 2009, 5% um, of the ODA was committed to the water sector, and um, which is in line with the commitment made in other countries. But the problem is that Afghanistan is a country with uh, um, poor water infrastructure and as a result, in terms of water cap capacity per capita, we're one of the lowest um, in the world um, or definitely in the region compared to our uh, neighboring countries. We, we suffer from um, infrastructure, water storage, um, 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 and as a result, people are vulnerable to these droughts and floods because we get you know, we're an upstream country during a winter time, it snows, um, and then in the springtime, the snow melts. And because of the management and lack of infrastructure and lower efficiency of the irrigation, the farmers are not able to use all this water. Then there are periods of drought where people do not have access to water. So if we do have better storage capacity, we will be able to store water so the farmers could rely on those resources during um, drought periods. And similarly with the floods, I mean, the flood water could be actually used to improve the efficiency of agriculture sector. Um, so in when we did an analysis of per capita investment in water sector, Afghanistan was not doing uh, good, I mean, you know, 26,000, I mean, uh, for example, $26 was um, spent in the water sector for Iraq. For the same year, it was only $3 uh, spent on Afghanistan, where Afghanistan's infrastructure has deteriorated tremendously compared to uh, Iraq. And the second part is we need to be doing better in terms of aid um, effectiveness of these funds um, and also the government performance for executing these funds has to increase because a lot of times money have been committed but the government cap capacity to spend the money is not um, uh, there as well. Then we have the challenge of transboundary water issues. One of the reasons why the international community and the major donors such as the World Bank and, and um, Asian Development Bank and USAID, um, one of the reasons why they're reluctant to invest in the water sector for the infrastructure has to do with the concerns over transboundary water issues. And, um, and then in you know, uh, river basins such as Amu, and um, in Helmand, Helmand, for instance, we do have an agreement, so we need to be supporting you know, the implementation of the treaty with Iran and at the same time supporting Afghanistan's effort with um, infrastructure in that river basin. And another area that the donor could, maybe perhaps through multilateral um, funding mechanisms, um, have joined large infrastructure uh, projects where actually it uh, not only helps with the water insecurity of Afghanistan, but it helps with the neighboring country's energy deficiency. 
Um, right now, um, there is some discussion about a joint dam uh, on Kunai River Basin, and the expectation are that after the dam is constructed, um, then the energy could be exported to Pakistan and help their economy. Um, so, you know, there could be these mechanisms um, which requires the funding of the international community as well as their political engagement with both countries to pursue projects that could enhance the benefit of water sharing for both countries. Do you see any role of Afghan civil society to support this process through lobbying or anything the like? Um, yes, definitely. Um, we water sector we I mean there has been some research done but one area that i feel the civil society could independently provide analysis and information for the policy makers uh, whether they are within the government as well as the international uh, community so um, i feel like both the government as well as the donor community will benefit from their independent analysis um, I mean, one era, for instance, how could we promote the idea of benefit sharing for other river basins, even if it um, it involves in a river basin where we do not have um, uh, shared, um, we do not have an agreement with the neighboring country. I mean, that's one area. Another area, you know, considering that the civil society are closer to the Afghan population, there is a, you know, um, a disconnect between what the Afghans uh, perceive uh, to be done in the water sector compared to what the um, government is doing or what the donor is doing. So the civil society could play a, a role in lobbying both, um, you know, on behalf of the people to the government as well as the donor actors.